collective shift um, that's based in California um, with a full development team that has taken all the original underlying technology that was used the last couple of years and totally redeveloped it based on all the feedback um, that the last couple of years of piloting has produced. So um, LRNG is the name of the platform that we're going to be using uh, here in Pittsburgh. That's what we're going to be training you guys on today and encouraging folks to use. So Pittsburgh City of Learning is the campaign. That's the effort. Um, LRNG is the actual like technology platform. It's actually the name of the product. So you'll hear me saying that again and again. Um, and LRNG as a product seeks to build on many of the same things that we, we worked through the last few years through City of Learning. Um, but things like closing the opportunity gap, which we know exists for a lot of young people, um, connecting learning to the community and sort of perceiving learning as something that's much grander than something that happens just inside a classroom. Uh, increasing discoverability, so a place where, where young people can go and sort of search and find things to do in their neighborhood, uh, in their city based on interests. Uh, validate that learning using badges and ultimately sort of begin to unlock opportunities, which is a key. So what are, what's all the work that we're doing? Where is that leading students? What's that getting them access to? How is that improving sort of access and equity uh, of opportunity? So those are some of the goals of LRNG. Um, there's also four design pillars to keep in mind, and these are inspired by the theory of connected learning. Um, and these basically say that uh, experiences that are part of LRNG or the experiences we're thinking about developing for young people um, should build on their interests. So it's important to see where they are and sort of build on the interests that they have. To create connections between experiences for students so that you can start to see something like a learning map. You can start to see how these things begin to connect and lead you somewhere down a, down a pathway or a playlist. Uh, emphasize production. So there's a lot of folks in the room that work with making. But what are the artifacts associated with the experiences that the students are having? Can they build a portfolio of that? Can they show you what they've done? And then lastly, again, sort of unlocking opportunities. So whether that's uh, just a link to the next experience that makes sense for them, or if that's an internship opportunity or a job opportunity or whatever it might be, how are we actually connecting youth with real <coughs> opportunities? So those are the, the pillars that guide and lead LRNG. Um, importantly, before we go much further, uh, we should talk about something called the LRNG elements. And so these are the major aspects of the platform. Um, and this terminology is something you're, you're going to want to get familiar with. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk through them, and we'll begin to play with them a little bit more in a moment. But there are essentially three major elements of the LRNG platform. So the first are what they call XPs, which are experiences. So this is any learning experience that, that a youth uh, might have. Um, and there's two types of them. There's local and digital. So digital are ones that, that truly happen online. Uh, local XPs are ones that happen sort of in a makerspace or in a classroom or something that's sort of in person that's happening in the world. The second element are uh, playlists. And playlists are XPs that have been stitched together in a smart way. So they've been, synced, they've been sequenced or linked together normally around some sort of common theme. Um, and that playlist results in a badge and for our purposes, a badge is defined as a shareable digital credential that provides evidence of learning and unlocks some kind of an opportunity. So it should do both of those things. So as you begin to think about the badge you're going to develop, um, it should unlock an opportunity and show that some learning has happened. So these are uh, three terms to get really familiar with, and those are called the LRNG elements. Um, just to put a finer point on it, uh, this is what I just said. So two different types of XPs in person. As you'll see in a second, um, these shapes actually match the platform. So in person, uh, XPs look like a house, for lack of a better word. And uh, digital look like a circle. Uh, this is an example of a playlist, the way playlists work. Um, and so you can see a series of XPs stitched together um, and then ultimately resulting in a badge. And for those of you that have been with us for a while, that's a little different, right? So one of the things, one of the major changes that's happened is that uh, in the past, there's been this idea that you can get a badge for lots of different things. And so lots of badges were developed, but they didn't have a lot of currency. They didn't have a lot of value, uh, partially because maybe there are too many of them, or they, they weren't actually representative of a learning outcome. So the example we often give when we're being trite is, like, you walked in here today, so I could have given you a badge for showing up, and I could have given you a badge for getting lunch, and getting a cup of coffee and another one for sitting down, another one for doing the activity, right? As soon as you do this, like, you basically pull all of the value out of the whole system. 
um, because there's not enough currency associated with the badge. So one of the big conceptual changes which we think is valuable for LRNG that's different from the past couple of years is that what used to be many badges are now probably a series of XPs. And so the, the thought is that these XPs have value in and of themselves and we should call them that and we should, we should make that known and you can get sort of credit for being part of an experience but they ultimately lead to a badge that has a lot more value um, and that unlocks some kind of opportunity. So that's the change. Um, badges we've talked about. So again, to illustrate that, last year in uh, 2014 and 2015, there were lots of badges across Pittsburgh for lots of different things and they were sort of scattered about. Now, changes a little bit here in 2016, looking at uh, experiences that lead uh, to a badge as part of a playlist. Um, the difference here is that this might be within one institution. So this is all experiences that a student might have in one, one place. Uh, this is an example of one that maybe a student is bouncing around between organizations and begin to think about how cross-organizational experiences might work <coughs> and how that might be valuable for, for students. So that's the quick rundown. Um, and you probably have questions, but we already know that we've got questions.